What's up guys, today we're going to talk about a mean stack application uh, that I created and currently working on. It's basically a bookmark application that helps you organize your bookmarks. So first I will demo the application, then we will go through the code step by step. So we are using MongoDB as our database to store the bookmarks and Express as our web framework and AngularJS on the front end and Node to write the server code. So before I start the application, let's start the MongoDB on default port. MongoDB. So MongoDB is running and waiting for connections on port 27017, which is the default port for MongoDB. Now we can start the application. So our application is running on port localhost 8080. So let's go and see the application. So this is the front page of the application. Link repository, don't lose your bookmarks again. So let's create a user first. So what should be the name? Okay, I will create, not me. Okay, David. password will be test and if you type the wrong password again it will say password didn't match type again so test again create account cheers your account is created so it will redirect you to the login page and let's log in now david at the rate gmail.com and password is test Get in so this is the list view we are using angular ui router on the front end we will talk about that okay let's first create some bookmarks so let's create some bookmarks click on this button okay we need some links let's grab some links from twitter because that's the easiest way to get a lot of links okay we will grab this one some more links because we need two three links Okay, it's about, okay, which more docker, okay, these links regarding travel, okay, we will find some more links, um, okay, four or five links would be enough for us to demo the application, okay, so, this link is up so it's a docker cheat sheet let's grab the link so put the link and description will be docker cheat sheet and now we want to tag our bookmark so let's create some bookmark because we don't have any bookmark right now so it will be docker and by the way if you don't put any thing here and try to save tag it will give you a warning Looks like you forgot to name your tag or if you name your tag uh, which have anything other than alphabets and hyphen it won't allow you suppose you type some numbers so it only allows alphabets and hyphen so currently I have made it like this so doctor spelling is wrong okay they are save tag tag is created now we can tag our bookmark docker and uh, let's create one more tag here. It will be cheat shit. Say tag. So at least one tag and maximum eight tags. So it requires at least one and you can only have eight tags at the max. So let's attach that tag cheat sheet and save the bookmark. Let's create some more bookmarks so that we can show you the feature of the applications. So this is related to travel, travel blog or something. So this is all marketing stuff. So we will just grab the link from here. That's the link and travel places. So let's create some tag for travel. Photography. Okay, nomad, something like that. Nomad. So 
let's attach those tags now. Nomad, travel, photography. One more tag or something? Okay, that will be enough. Okay, this is. I won't get that. Okay, let's get some tags on something on Node.js and AngularJS. So let's search on Node.js. So Apache and Node.js on the same server. Let's grab this Stack Overflow link and uploading files in. Node.js, so let's grab this link also. Mm, what else? One more, one or two more links, that's it. Okay, which one? Mm, okay, okay, we will take this. No, no, not this. Okay, give me a tag. JavaScript benchmarks. Okay, let's attach this. So let's grab this link. So tag will be Apache and Node.js. Apache and Node.js. So let's create tag Node.js because we don't have tag that Node.js tag. Save tag. Uh, Node.js. Another tag I would like to add is Stack Overflow here. So I can tag. Later on, I can search all the bookmarks that are actually from Stack Overflow. So save tag. Another thing I wanted to point out like, if you have already created a tag, you cannot create it again. So because we have that Node.js tag again, the tag with this name already exists. So let's attach those two tags. And one more thing, since Node.js is already there, it's not showing as a suggestion tag for this bookmark. If I remove this tag, now it shows both. So Node.js and Nomad both. And Stack Overflow, the tag we created. Okay, that's it. Let's save the bookmark. And our last bookmark will be... Okay this one okay so it's a uh, what it is actually uploading files okay so uploading files uh, in Node.js I should say so let's create a tag upload files say tag so we will attach Node.js, or maybe we can create another tag express. Express, and let's attach more tags to it. Even though it doesn't make sense, let's create some more tag. AngularJS, and what else? Development. just putting random text so I can show you the search facility that we have development and yeah that's it uh, okay this will be our last tag okay JavaScript benchmarks get the link and we will say JavaScript benchmarks so let's create one tag JS. Okay. Oh, JavaScript will be better. JavaScript. And save bookmark. So we have uh, now five tags, five bookmarks. So we can arrange it. Uh, shot it actually so this is descending order so most recent one will be on the top and this is ascending order the recent one will be on the bottom 
and you can update a tag or you can delete a tag so let's first update a tag so we created this one uh, JavaScript okay let's update some other one which have a lot of tags so we will update this one so it's on uploading files and it have already four tags so let's attach some new tags to it uh, what should be the tag okay So let's attach HTML5 to it. Okay, 5. This is number we cannot take. Okay, so what else? I think I should add numbers also. That will make sense. Okay, I will add it later. So what tags we should put? Uh, loading files. Okay, let's add some random tags here. Let's create a tag called NoDB. Save tag. Let's attach a, another tag called JavaScript. Uh, now, this JavaScript tag is already there, so if we try to create now, it says it's already there, so we can attach from here itself. JavaScript, what else we have? Cheat sheet and photography and upload files. So after creating eight tags, you can see that input field is not there. So if I remove this, that input field will come back. So let's remove this also. Let's attach upload files and cheat sheet. Okay, so eight tags and that's done. Maybe we can uh, change this description also. Node.js Express. Update bookmark. Bookmark updated successfully. So let's delete a bookmark. So let's delete this one. So it will give you the details. And if you click this, it's gone. Bookmark deleted. And that's gone. So now our bookmarks are there we can update and delete now let's search for bookmarks so i'm looking for all the bookmarks that are tag node.js so we have two bookmarks which have the tag node.js you can see node.js here and node.js here and all the bookmarks okay only those bookmarks which have the tag javascript so these two have the tag javascript if we remove that it will show all the bookmarks and you can search on description and link also so anything bookmark that comes from stack or flow so this is the one that comes from stack or flow okay anything that have docker in it so this is the one So this is how we can search through and filter through in the bookmarks. We can update bookmarks, we can add more tags, we can remove tags. And if you want to go to that link, you just click on this button open and it will take you there. Okay, so, and again, you can log out, so that's done. And you can log in back. So what was the user, David? Yeah. So let's now talk about the code. Uh, so first we gonna talk about the server side code, then we will talk about client side. So on the server side, we are using again Node. So which is the code is not that much on the server side. It's just an API which just uh, returns the results. So let's first talk about the Mongo schema we have. So on the server, uh, we have Mongo schema, three schema actually, one for users, another one for tag, and the third one is for bookmarks. So for signing up a user, we have this schema. Uh, we have a username field, an email field, and password, and the time at which that account was created. So it's a Mongo schema and username should be unique and email have to be unique. So we cannot 
sign up a user. Uh, uh, two users cannot have the same name or email. And then we have a tag schema. So the name of the tag and the time that it was created, the tag was created and the username by which it was created because uh, we will not show the tags uh, created by other users because we show only those tags to a user that was created by uh, himself so we don't show all the tags by created by all the users that's why we need this created by field so when a user logs in we only populate those tags that was created by that user and then we have uh, this unique uh, index which is a combined index on tag and created by field so a user uh, cannot create uh, two tags of the same name their name cannot be same so different users can create the same tag but the same user cannot create two tags with the same name then we have a bookmark schema which have a link property description tags uh, which is actually a string comma separated string of tags and created at the time at which created and created by which will be the username of the user who created that bookmark so this is the schema we have the these three schemas so and also we have defined some methods on this because when we we will be signing up a user we will have to store the password in encrypted format so we have a mongoose provide you these functions to attach to your schema so before saving uh, a user we will take their plain password and we will use the bcrypt which is a library and also algorithm to encrypt passwords to encrypt anything so here we are encrypting the plain password and salt world work factor is actually the number of iteration i guess uh, to encrypt the password and the more it will be the higher the number will be the more time it will take to encrypt the password and higher and more complex to decrypt the password and more time it will take to decrypt the password and i think usually people i have seen using 10 so i have used 10 here so this is uh, the method so before saving a user we will encrypt their password and we will uh, save the encrypted password in the database so and this compare password is again a method on the schema mongoose again provide these methods to attach to the schema so when we will be logging to the user we have to compare the their plain password we will take their plain password and encrypt it on the server and match it with the password that is stored in the user collection if they match it then that user have that's right password and we will log them in and this is just we are naming our schema like we have named the user schema with collection users tag schema with tags and bookmark schema with bookmarks and we have imported this with the model user tag and bookmark so this is pretty much it and so we are using bcrypt library mongoose which is an odm for working with MongoDB with Node.js and Chalk is just to render your console.log uh, with different colors which makes it easy to debug and see the error messages and all. So this is the dburi MongoDB localhost which is running on my local machine. So let's see what's there if we connect to the database what's there. So Mongo, it will make a request to the default port 2717. Let's see what collections we have. So we have bookmarks, we have tags and users, system.indexes is for indexes purposes that is created by MongoDB itself. Let's see the users. So I will say db.users.find and let them pretty print it. So we have this users, a lot of many users I created before. So that recently we created this user, David. Uh, now you can see this password was encrypted. This is actually a test password and it's encrypted like this using bcrypt. 
and the email and the username and the underscore ID which MongoDB creates by default and it also have a unique index on underscore ID. Created at the time which it was created and MongoDB store is in ISO date format. So this is on the server side we have talked about uh, schemas. Let's talk about the API on the server. So this is the file server.js. So we are using Express, which is the Node.js web framework. Body parser, so we can take the uh, parse the body that's come from the request. Like in, when you are making a post request, you will send some data. And body parser is help to get that data. And JSON web token for authentication. Uh, we will talk about that uh, okay let's talk right now uh, so we are using jot for authentication so anybody who is making a request to our api must have a valid token and if he don't have a valid token we won't uh, give back the results so this is why we are using jot for securing our api on the server json web token is the core uh, module and Express Jot is used to make it easy to work with Jots uh, with Express. So whenever a request will be coming, Express can easily uh, intercept the request and figure out whether that token is there or not, or whether it's a valid token or not. So these two packages and modules we are using Jot, Express Jot, and JSON Web Token. And this is the DB file which we talked about, which have our schemas defined and uh, schema methods are defined there. And user tag and bookmarks, this contains our API. We will talk about that. This is here, bookmark, tag, and user. And JOT secret, this is the secret key we are using to in, uh, encrypt the token, to create a token by this secret key and this is we are using body parser, parser .json and where our static assets are located which is in the public and express jot now what this line means is we are not looking for any token or something like that if the request comes from our slash and slash sign up or slash login because if somebody is coming to your application they won't have any token unless they log in so sign up login and slash which is your root uh, we are not looking for any valid token to validate and if the request come for the root we are just sending the index.html file which is this we will talk about this later let's first finish the server code so sign up login tag and this is the API basically we are using on the server to return results so let's first talk about sign up then we will talk about login okay so sign up when sign up request comes which will have the sign up body which will contain the username and email and password we will make a request to user.sign up which we imported here so sign up will take the request and it will set the email username and password and it will just save it uh, save is the method that will save that uh, user to the uh, database and if some error happens suppose an account with the same name or email is already there it will send the status 400 and and the error message as an account with same username or email already exists pretty simple and again, remember that when we are saving a user, it there we, we, we defined a pre method there. If you see in the db.js, we had this uh, pre method on the save. So before even calling save, it will automatically kick in and uh, your password will be encrypted. So that plain password will get encrypted before saving that user to the database and then we have the login so we talk about sign up then the login so again it's in this file we are exporting from this file so login again we will take the email and password so 
we will find out find one is the method so we will find whether there is any user with that email or not if not we will send a status of 400 no account with this email else we will see that username and we also gonna uh, take the password and compare the password which is stored in the database if it matches we will call the next function next function we will set uh, we will send back the token to the uh, client and in this case we are storing that token in the browser's local storage so that that token can be sent on further request to the server and if password doesn't match we are sending a status of 400 e invalid email or password so this next function will only be called when that email is there and password also matches so what that next function is which is defined actually in this file itself so we create a login so it call this and the next function is this anonymous function callback actually so when authentication is done so their email is there in the database and password also matches we will sign that username with the secret key we set it there and we will send that token and the username to the client on successful login so they will this method will only be executed if the user name uh, if the email and password is there so if they are valid user then only we will set the token uh, and we will send the token so this is about sign up and login let's talk about tag now to create a tag we will make a post request on post request on slash tag slash tag so that's pretty simple just uh, slash tag will take the uh, request and call this create tag uh, from that tag file tag.js this uh, method will get executed we are creating a new tag which will take from the request name and uh, the name of the user who created it tag name and the name of the user who created it and it will save that tag to the database and if there is already a tag with that name it will send a status of 400 a tag with this name already exists similarly for retrieving all the tags created by a user we will make a request get request to slash tags so we are find we are doing a find on that tag schema tag schema and it will return all the tags created by a particular user created by and we will be sending the name of the user for retrieving the tag for a particular user so login sign up and tag creation and retrieval is done let's talk about bookmark now now to get a particular bookmark we will make a request to slash bookmark and slash id of that bookmark which will be the in this case underscore id of the document that is stored bookmark document that is stored in bookmarks collection to get all the tags for the particular user we will make the request to slash bookmarks and to create a new bookmark we will make a post request to slash bookmark and to update a bookmark we will make a request to slash bookmark and id of that uh, bookmark that we want to update and to delete a bookmark we will make a delete request to slash bookmark slash id of that bookmark so let's see all of these methods bookmark dot get bookmark get bookmarks and add bookmark and all these methods one by one so it's coming from this file so get bookmark again we will do a find one and we'll take the underscore id that is coming from the request and we will return that bookmark add bookmark again it will be a post uh, so uh, we will get the uh, post body parameters that are coming request uh, parameters that are coming and we will create a new bookmark and if some error happens we will uh, return status 400 error occurred while creating bookmark to update a bookmark so we will first have to figure out the bookmark that we want to update so we will take the underscore id and we will find that bookmark and then if it's found 
then we will update that bookmark otherwise we will say error occurred if some error happens or that bookmark is not there suppose somebody makes a request bookmark and just say some random id now that bookmark is not there with that id so we will say no bookmark found with id otherwise if it's there it's a valid request uh, so we will update whatever uh, was updated like link was updated or description or tags so that is update bookmarks now get bookmarks to get all the bookmarks created by a user we will do bookmark dot find uh, if you remember up we will did they find one here to get one bookmark now here we are doing a find to get all the bookmarks and we will just res uh, respond back with all the bookmarks returned by this query uh, to delete a bookmark again we can use this method find one and remove so it will get this id and delete that bookmark which have the underscore id which was uh, in the request parameter underscore id so we have covered this also delete bookmark get bookmarks update bookmark add bookmark and get a particular bookmark so this was the server side code so now let's talk about what's there on the client side there is nothing else on the server that's it so on the client side when the first request comes from localhost 8080 and slash that which is the root of the application we are sending this index.html file in the current directory so this is the file we are sending back so a lot of style sheets here we are using bootstrap and our custom css and toaster to give those notifications like tag created bookmark added bookmark updated angular strap we are using the models like if you click on this it will uh, pop up this model so for this we are using uh, angular strap model font or some icons so we're using font or some icons also these icons are font or some icons okay so toaster container and ui view we are not using that ng router so we have ui view here ui router and then we have this angular things all our scripts angular js angular router ui router angular anime toaster you angular strap because we are using angular model and the date also so we can search by date so all the bookmarks that were created on 25 so this date picker is from angular strap all the bookmarks that were created on 24 there was no bookmarks so nothing so 25 is the current date that we create bookmarks so all our constant services factory directives and controllers so we have to lot talk about so let's get to talk about one by one so the main file is this app.js in public which have all those configurations so we named our main module link repository app and it have dependency on ui router toaster angular this strap model ng strap and constants where we define the constants and controllers and factory and service and directives so configuring some date picker and http provider uh, which is like we are putting an interceptor here so whatever http call we make from the front end which uh, it will go through the auth interceptor and it will add a token on the request so on the server we can verify that token whether it's a valid token or not otherwise if it's not a valid token we just refuse the data from the server uh, we will talk about this in a later moment what this block is and this is the states uh, so root we have the state name index and it will give you all these templates are here so these are the templates so it will give you the index.html file login it will show you the login.html and controller is also there sign up and list and edit so basically we have five states one two three four five and that's it and one more thing uh, this is authenticate true so 
for some of the states, we only want user to show that state if uh, that user is authenticated. So suppose if somebody directly hits uh, slash list, they should not be shown the list uh, view there because this is authenticated. You if you want to see the list view, you have to be authenticated first. So we need authentication there first. And that's why we added this block here. So whenever a state change happens, we have to see whether we required authentication there for that state or not. So if somebody is just saying the root slash page, there is no authentication required. Again, login, there is no authentication required. Sign up page, there is no authentication required. But if you want to see the list view and edit view, you need to be authenticated first. So so the authenticate property should be true and name property like you should not be going to the login state now what that actually means if i can explain you to this that you are suppose somebody is just coming to login state we don't need to check up whether they are coming from uh, other state or not so we will what I actually means okay I will make it very simple so suppose somebody is coming uh, somebody just type the list uh, URL there so we will send them back to the login state why uh, and we will send them back to login state if three conditions are true they are not authenticated and the request is not uh, that state transition is not from login state because if they are in on the login state we don't want to send them back again to login so if somebody already requested for okay I will log out to explain what I actually mean so if somebody is just coming for login we don't want to again and again uh, send them back to login it will create a recursive function and it will keep calling itself uh, that's why we have put this condition here. So if they are not authenticated Authentication is required and they are not coming from a login state and they are not logged in then only we will uh, Send them back to the login state. So if somebody just type here list they So we will send them back to the login state if somebody types uh, added state with some ID to edit a bookmark because they are not authenticated we will send them back to the login state so again that authentication should be required for that state and they are not coming from the login state and they are not logged in already then only we will send them back to the login state that's why we created this uh, run block so whenever a state change happens we will check for these three conditions if these met it means that user is not logging and we should send them back to the login state so this is it in the main file so let's see the application again so let's hit the main endpoint and this is the index.html which is is here so nothing here just login and sign up button here so when you, if you click on this, we are using UISREF to send them back on the states. Sign up and login. So this is the sign up template, which is just a form, big form actually. We are asking for the username. We are asking for their email address, their password, and we are asking for confirm that password again. And if it all happens, we are calling and the submit sign up thing and if any errors comes up it will show the sign up error here so if somebody just say username that is already there david something just garbage.com password and password so we will say password did not match or we will say some password let's say uh, user user an authentic account with the same username or email already exists because we already have a user with name David 
So let's make it uh, John and again it should give us uh, that error David at the rate gmail.com because in this case even though the name is uh, distinct the email is the same which we already have in our database so if I make it yahoo.com it will take that that's it it's created so once that sign up happens so we are calling sign up on clicking on that submit button so we have to go to the controllers okay let's see the controller sign up controller uh, if you remember we defined those controllers and views in the app.js file when we are defining the states so the sign up will have the sign up view sign up html and sign up controller so on sign up we are calling the sign up function we are checking whether the password and confirm password fields are the same or not if not we are showing this message and making this field to be empty confirm password if all things are good we are taking that username email and password and making a sign up request by using service so one important thing to note here is we are not using dollar http here in the controllers to make uh, like best practices we are creating separate services which will actually make the request and we are using those services in the controller to make those requests so user service dot sign up we will see the service uh, which is i think in this file service.js so there are a lot of services okay where is the user service yeah this is the user service sign up so it will take a user and it will make a post request to sign up and taking that user which we set from the client side and setting that content type header uh, actually i was not setting that header and express was kind of giving me some errors it was not able to parse those uh, request body so i think this is required content type uh, is application json so user service will actually make and this constant is also a it's actually a constant uh, which we have defined for endpoint of the uh, our API so it's there in this constant file so API URL will be localhost 8080 for deployment we will use this API URL so you can have many constants that's why I created a separate file for constant but right now it's just one constant maybe you can just take this constant and put it in app.js rather than creating a new file for a constant okay so this was the sign up controller so we use the user service for uh, to sign up and if it's there we show the toaster message cheers your account is created and we send them to the login state to login so that's done now let's talk about the login state which will this is also very simple just we are taking the email address and password and checking and making a request so this we are asking for e email and the password and on click we are logging the user so let's see the login controller again it will use the user service for login you can see the service again to login it will make a post request to slash login and whatever user you have said in that uh, request so email and passwords are sent from that form email and password field will be sent and that will be sent to the server and if it's uh, successful login we will use the auth token factory it's actually a factory to set the token in the browser's local storage so if it's a successful login means email and password is there in our database and it matches then we will set the token which is returned by the server into the browser's local storage we will also set the username and logged in property to true and we will send them to list state otherwise we will say invalid email or password so if you log in now with some garbage thing 
it will give you a message invalid email or password but if you provide the right things it will send you on the list state and it will auto also set these these requests were bad requests that's why uh, because it does not have the right uh, token so that's why these requests uh, are shown in red so we just successfully logged in so it will set in the browser's local storage those out token and so I wanted to show you that local storage so auth token is sent this is sent by the server and logged in is set to true and username is David let's log out and let's create a sign up again for a new user so that should be okay what should the username okay Tweety Tweety at the red gmail.com most people have gmail account so the password we will say Tweety Tweety and just create an account and then it will redirect us to login so let's login to the at the rate gmail.com and password tweety so it will send us to the list and with this account we don't have any bookmarks so there is no bookmarks here but what i wanted to show you is in the local storage those tokens and the username and logged in properties so this is done so we have talked about sign up and login and now we're gonna talk about the list state which is the currently the state in which we are so I'm gonna log out and I'm gonna log in with David's account which have created by which we using we have created so many bookmarks David at the rate test get in so all these bookmarks were created by David which will only be visible to David because there is no sense in uh, making all the bookmarks visible to all the users and also when we okay we will talk about logout now when we click on logout we just clear all those uh, local storage properties that we have set and we will we send them back to the index view so on clicking logout you will see that storage is cleared so if you see local storage now there will be nothing that's it and we send them back to index date so let's log in again other rate gmail.com and password is test so this is the thing so we talk about login sign up let's see the logout also we are using again user service and calling the logout uh, which will clear the local storage properties and then we are sending to index day and also we are showing the success message yep you are logged out so so our controllers are kind of very sleek we are using services to actually do the work and on the basis of that we are just showing some messages and redirecting so user service again sign up login and log out here we are just removing those tokens and username and login property so we have talked about sign up controller login controller logout controller let's talk about the list controller now which is uh, responsible for showing this list on the list state so here we have this uh, table actually this is the table we have and we have this button which if we click it will show a bootstrap uh, angular strap model to create a bookmark so let's see the HTML for that first so here is that okay navigation template also I should show you this is the navigation template which have that mm, header which is this link was three and log out so we are including that in our list file and include and 
that create bookmark button this is that button and now we have this our list bookmark description link tags and time which is the header you can see this is the headers and these are the search fields by which we can search our bookmarks that list we can search through so we have the ng model on those search fields and here we are just doing a ng repeat on bookmarks filtering by a search bookmarks which is a method so that we can search and filter through our bookmarks only by the things that are entered by the users so if here we say only javascript things it, that list will get filtered And these all are case insensitive searches. So if I say capital JavaScript, that's also the same. And we are using date filter here to just refactor that date in readable format. If you remember, we are in Mongo, uh, the date formats are stored in ISO format. So DDMM YY and R minute and second and a for am or pm you want to show meridian style and if they click on edit this will take them to edit state so this is the button if they click on this they will go to edit state to edit that bookmark and if you click on delete it will pop up a new model which will be handled by a different uh, controller so let's see so this is pretty clear now so we are just repeating over bookmarks by the list controller which are set here bookmarks so when list state is rendered it will make a request to show bookmarks which again we have a bookmark service which will make a request and return the data and save the data in the scope with bookmarks and in the HTML we are just looping over this array so and we have this model show create bookmark model create tag model and delete bookmark model and this is the angular strap thing to create a model so we have a reference to that model also so bookmark delete this things and now we should talk about uh, bookmarks is done so let's go to the bookmarks controller okay let's see that function first so if you remember this we have a search bookmarks function and then we are ordering by that order so here we have this setting the order also uh, change order and Initially, we set the order to be descending order. So initially, if you load that list, it will be shorted into descending order. So what it means is most recent bookmark will be on the top. And this thing is searching facility and shorting feature is controlled by the search controller, which is again a child of that list controller. So search controller, which is here, we are just setting the search uh, object and shorting order which we initially set to the descending order so initially we want to load all the bookmarks we don't want to do any searching to restrict so initially all these fields will be empty four fields will be empty so initially we are returning true for everything but if they type in some fields we will do the filtering based on that field so if description is not equal to empty then we will uh, search through in our bookmarks list uh, uh, for that description for that particular bookmark so if that particular bookmark have that description that we type in the search field then only that bookmark will be shown in that bookmarks list similarly for link and for time also for time there is some hacks to compare uh, different timings uh, we use this compare date uh, method which is a there in the helpers service so we have a service called helpers here mm, 
yeah here and compare date so this is the method we are using to compare dates if their date month and year is same then we return that bookmark otherwise we don't return that bookmark so this is the searching and shorting facility so initially the list will be shorted into descending order but if you change this it's actually sh uh, set the value of the change order to uh, like it's just toggle the values so that shorting kicks in and just short the bookmark list so search controller is actually responsible for two things to search through the filter through the list and to order the list depending on the value of the order uh, pro order property on the short order uh, object and initially it's set to the descending order so now we have talked about list controller and search controller itself so search controller is just uh, searching and shorting and list controller is just setting the bookmarks thing for the view to render the bookmarks and we are just attaching some functions so that we can show the create bookmark model and delete bookmark model and this will come when we open a bookmark create tag model so this if we click on this it will pop up this tag model for creating a tag so let's talk about now for bookmark controller which uh, handles this bookmark model so bookmark tags bookmark messages these are the some of the properties we are sending so initially when we call uh, when we click on this it will pop up this bookmark model and it will also populate tags here if the user have already created some tags so if I search here a it will pop up all the tags that were created by the user and one point here all these fields are uh, mandatory so you have to provide a link and some description and at least one tag and at max eight tags so if you just click on save bookmark uh, you won't get it you will get some warnings for everything so if you put some link and again please fill in the bookmarks again and again you have to bookmark you have to add something description you have to add something and you click on this again you have to add the tag to your bookmark to be able to save a bookmark and you cl close the model by this and if you click on this it will pop up uh, this tag uh, model which is handled by tag controller so this is the controller that is responsible for creating a tag and bookmark controller is responsible for creating that bookmark so on the bookmark controller we are loading the tags by using tag service again we are not making any HTTP calls from our controller we are using services to do that task for us so tag service dot get tags it will load all those tags and this is an event whenever a new tag is added we will again call those uh, that load tags method so that new tag which we have added which uh, will be shown in the suggestion list select tag and remove tag and are the methods here on the tag so if you click on this it will call the select tag method on the scope and that tag will uh, jump into this tags box and remove tag will be called when you just click on this cross symbol that symbol and that tag will be removed from this tags box and it will again come into for the suggestion box so if you have added angular js now if you search for angular tag it won't come because it's already there in that tags box and also we are filtering uh, and only showing the nine tags at a time so if you have a lot of tags that matches to your uh, tag fill what you have typed it will only show the uh, nine most relevant tags according to the search so if I say node if I say just no it will say nomad and node.js both the tags so this is what select tag and remove tag does 
and if those input tags so if we have already added eight tags it won't show that input fill we have already seen that so if you have added uh, eight tags to this tag fill that input tag fill so seven we have added now let's add one more now that input tag fill will go and if we remove that it will come back again so we are doing these checks here in select and remove tag so if uh, that input tags length is less than eight then we will show that tag fill otherwise we won't show that tag fill and this focus is a factory actually to focus on the next uh, after adding a new tag it will focus directly automatically to that new uh, input field so what it means is if you add a tag after selecting this tag it will automatically focus on this input field on clicking the select tag and also the remove tag so even if you remove this it will blinking in this tag field so that's why this focus is there then we have a create bookmark uh, thing. So again, we have, you're using helpers service. So if the link or description is empty, we will show this error messages. Or if there is no tag, then we will show the error message, at least one tag for the bookmark. And this again is a method, uh, comma separated tags on the helper service. So when we add these tags, it's basically an array of uh, tags. Now, how we store it into the database is we go through that list and we make it a comma separated string. And that's what we send in the post body when we have to create a bookmark. So let's add some link. So let's give some link to this thing. Okay, let's give this line this tag new tag and just some description things to do in Sri Lanka oh, how this fired up okay things to do in Sri Lanka save the bookmark so this six bookmark which is actually an array of strings we will convert that array of strings into a comma separated string which we will send for the request post request so on clicking save bookmark it will call this method create bookmark it will check all these fields if that's all true all correct all right we will uh, get through the input tags array and we will make a comma separated a string and we will send back to the server to add that bookmark and after uh, that bookmark is created we will hide that bookmark model and and we will again call the show bookmark so that we can the newly created bookmark is present in that list so that's why we are calling this show bookmarks method again delete bookmark Let's talk about the little If you click on this, it will pop up this uh, model, angular strap model, and we click on this delete bookmark. It will delete that bookmark and hide that delete bookmark model after deleting. Uh, note that we are sending the underscore ID of the bookmark to delete when we are opening this bookmark. So if you see this list controller and the delete bookmark model, all these models are here delete bookmark model so if you click on delete bookmark it sends the underscore ID field so that's what uh, we get here in this bookmark controller underscore ID field and we make a request to delete that bookmark and if it's deleted we hide that uh, model bookmark delete model and we show this toaster and again we call the show bookmarks so that we can uh, show the uh, recent uh, updated uh, list of bookmarks after deletion so currently that uh, bookmark is there uh, things to do in uh, Sri Lanka so if I delete this it will delete that and it will call the show bookmarks and it will remove that uh, bookmark from the list 
So that was the bookmark controller list we talked about everything we talked about uh, tag controller yeah this is the tag controller which kicks in when we create when we call this so this is uh, this model is handled by this tag controller so if you click on this save tag it will call the create tag method on the scope and it will check uh, or whether this tag name is empty or not or if the tag name is valid tag name or not it contains whether number or not those things and if all of these things are okay it will make a request to create that tag by taking that name and on successful creation we will show that toaster and again if a new tag is created this thing is important now here so suppose I created a tag Google once I save tag it will broadcast an event so this new tag will be available to me right now so I don't have to refresh or something to while creating a new tag so this is immediately available to me in this uh, bookmark creation so that's why we are uh, firing an event broadcasting an event new tag added and in the bookmark controller actually we are listening for this event so if you see here if new tag is added all the load tags which will make a request to the database and it will load the newly tag created tag and it will set it into the uh, tags list uh, which is available here on this scope so this was the tag controller uh, not very big just checking the validation and then making a post request to create a tag and then we hide that uh, model after this two seconds and the last thing is edit controller we want to talk about uh, it's similar to create controller creating a bookmark controller but a with slight difference so what's the difference here is let's edit a, this bookmark if I click this it will take me to the edit uh, state and you can see here edit state with underscore ID which is the underscore ID of that uh, bookmark so this is the bookmark it have uh, made the request to get that uh, bookmark and set all the details of that bookmark in this uh, panel bootstrap panel so it already have eight tags that's why it's not showing that input fill here so this is the check we are doing here so get bookmark so get that particular bookmark and set the bookmark details and if the input tags is already equal to equal to 8 don't show that edit tag field otherwise show that so if we go back and if I click edit on this it have just one tag so that input field will be shown this input field is shown here because it does not have eight tags already uh, which was uh, the case in this uh, bookmark it already have eight tags so don't show that uh, edit tag field so if I remove that it will show that tag field so let's add a tag here docker and let's update this and again it will take you to the list uh, state after updating a document uh, bookmark and you can see docker tag have been added so this is what we are doing load tags again when we uh, update try to update it we have to load the tags here so these tags will be loaded and which is available for us for uh, suggestions and we just click and select those tags similar kind of things remove tag and select edit tag uh, update bookmark again it will uh, when you click this update bookmark uh, button it will make a put uh, request again we are hiding those HTTP requests by separating it into the services it will uh, there now in this put request we are sending uh, the ID of the bookmark and the body uh, the updated body that one uh, we want to update with <coughs> so this will make a request and if a new tag is added again this 
uh, we are loading the new tag. So suppose if somebody comes here and create a new tag here, say AWS, once we click the save tag, it will add a new tag and it will fire an event. And on that event, we will add new, uh, we will load those uh, tags, load tags. So AWS will be available now for us to edit. Like similar thing we did there in the bookmark controller while creating a bookmark. Cancel update. So if somebody clicks on cancel, we will just take to the list state. So this is what is there in the client side. So all the controllers we covered, if you go through the code, you will be able to understand pretty much easily uh, what each controller is doing. And these are the templates which were used. Similar, just a model and a panel bootstrap things. Nothing major here. Okay, so we have talked about all those templates. What's pending now? Uh, services also we have seen. Compare date, extract date, check tag, check tag name, and com comma separated tags. All these methods are there in this service, so we can use uh, this service in our controllers uh, and make our controllers uh, uh, less code in the controllers, which is uh, the best practices for Angular. Stories to store once user is logged in or when user is logged out, we have to remove those things. So this is the storage service. Auth service to check whether user is logged in or not. If they are uh, making a request to protected resources, like if they are coming to the list state or edit state, we have to check in whether they are logged in or not. Bookmark service again for making all those requests to the server. Tag service similarly for making requests for tags. User service to check whether user uh, to making sign up and login requests. So we have separated in this. We have just one factory and we have a couple of factory here. Auth token factory uh, which will set the token which was returned by the server into the local storage of the browser and the interceptor uh, which takes the token from the local storage of the browser and attach it to the every request that goes from the client side to the server so you uh, server can authenticate whether the request is a valid request or not we are just adding that token uh, to the header uh, with name bearer authorization token there and then attaching the token focus is a factory to get the focus so what this factory actually is if you click on this we are focusing it so we have used the focus factory I have used the autofocus uh, HTML5 thing but I don't know why it didn't work in some cases so that's why I created this factory also focus factory if it, you just pass the uh, name uh, ID of the HTML element and it will focus uh, that element to the view. Directives. One directive is there just again for focusing. And that was our factory to focus. So if I click this, take focus is the directive we have used uh, I don't know why autofocus didn't work but that's why we have created a factory and a directive to make an element focus and that's not a major thing actually so templates are done we have talked about server we talk about pretty much everything now CSS okay that's done now so uh, I wanted to show you that thing if you just right now make a request to bookmarks this is postman we are making a request to see you you get there no authorization token was found but if you make a request to sign up it wants uh, uh, 
uh, see the tokens because this is not a protected uh, uh, API URL on the server. Actually, you cannot uh, make a yes, get request, you have to make a post request. I can't with the same user name, you have to send the body here. Okay, that's done now. Okay, so we have talked about almost everything. So in this project, we have set uh, authentication using charts and we have UI router to check whether each route, uh, whether accessing uh, a protected route, uh, whether user is already logged in or not. If not, we are sending back uh, to them to the login state. So I hope you find this helpful and if you are looking to do similar kind of thing in your project like setting authentication by using Jots and how to use UI router and things like that so you can make it and I would like to make uh, these controllers a bit more like less code maybe like adding a lot of uh, properties to scope is not the right thing so I will try to use this controller as syntax to make it more or less code in the controllers and try to separate all the common functionalities between different controllers and make it more kind of reusable code so I have up deployed this application also on internet so you can check this on linkository.com so the same application is deployed on the Heroku I have deployed this on a Heroku so let's create a sign up so what should be the name okay the name should be Muller I don't know why Muller but just Muller Mother at the gmail.com password okay let's send password okay so now let's log in let's type the wrong password invalid email or password okay let's type something different invalid email okay so muller gmail.com password i will be silent i won't speak okay we logged in let's create some bookmarks now grab some links that's it okay, this is the one that's on the local host this is on the server so links and description some random descriptions and some tag so we have to create a tag because this user don't have any new tags Google so let's add so basically you can do the same thing on the server now we have deployed this application you can update the bookmark let's create another tag react yes and add this tag react js update bookmark let's create one more bookmark just fast Mark cheat sheet. Let's add a tag to it. Cheat sheet. Save tag and save the book. Okay, we have to provide the tag. At least one tag. Cheat sheet and save bookmark. So let's delete this bookmark. So that's gone and now this view will be updated and that's gone and now we can log out that's it so if you have any suggestions and comments and feedback about the code or maybe the way it's written or something that we can improve on 
definitely do that and that's it i hope you find it beneficial and i will put the, uh, the link for the github repo uh, so if you are interested in getting the code i will put that link so you can grab the code and edit it as you like or take some certain piece of code for authentication or a similar kind of things hope you find it beneficial cheers and have a great day